Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity before Sean and Lady Dean to thank Ashley and the CCLG group for having us here and to those of you that we've spoken to for sharing your stories and for being open and having honest conversations with us. We'll be around until the end of the day. If you have any questions either straight after the talk or afterwards, please do come and talk to us. So before I delve straight into the work that we're doing, I want to give you a little bit of a quick overview about how things have changed in Cancer Research UK in relation to the work that we do in children's cancers. So unlike Sophie, who knew that people would know who she is, I very vaguely put my and Shoulders pictures up there. They were headshots that we got done. Um, and what we've done in Cancer Research UK is taken a far more coordinated approach. So Shona's role and my own role are new within the charity in the last 12 months. And what we're doing is coming together from two different sides of the organisation. I am the Senior Comms and Marketing Manager for Children's Cancers, and Shona, as Guy alluded to earlier, is the PCMC Network Coordinator, but also the Cancer Research UK Pediatric Research Manager. And what we do within Cancer Research UK is what you see underneath here is what we call our working group. And we bring together people from across the charity who are interested and who want to do work around children's cancers, be that to promote awareness, be that to raise money, be that to promote research. And we come together once a month to say, what's new? What's happening? What can we do differently? How can we shout about this more? Any issues or any new ideas that we feel we need to test the waters a bit with, we also bring and feed up into our director steering group level. And I think for us, what makes Sean and I very excited about this is we have buy-in from directors across the organisation, from the research <coughs> side, the patient involvement side, fundraising, communications, and how we work with corporate partners. So the approach that's been established within Cancer Research UK since January is children's cancers have always been important to us but we need to mix up a little bit how we're doing that, how we're funding research, and how we're talking about it. So this is the new structure in place. If anyone ever has any queries, you can contact myself or Shona. We might not be the best people to answer, but we'll know who you can talk to. So I want to touch a little bit on the fundraising and some of the communications work that we do in relation to children's cancers. I don't need to tell people in this room that we have made progress in children's cancers, and more children and young people than ever are surviving before. But as Guy said earlier, it's not enough. We're still losing 520 children and young people a year, but also side effects. What about quality of life? What about long-term side effects? What about those who survive not having to worry about potentially getting another cancer when they're older in their life? Not having to experience fatigue like Faith has just spoken about. Not having to worry about whether or not they'll get a job in the future. And when we recognised that this was a need that we needed to find new, better and kinder treatments for children's cancers, we decided to set up what we call a brand Kids and Teens, Cancer Research UK Kids and Teens. And as a campaign, it raises money that is specifically ring-fenced to fund research for new, better and kinder treatments in children's cancers. And this is one aspect of the work that I do. But in recent years, it's become increasingly apparent that it's not always just about fundraising and funding research, that there's a lot to do in awareness. And when I speak about awareness, I mean in two facets, both about awareness of children's cancers more broadly, that they exist, that yes, we're making progress, but there's more to do, and also Cancer Research UK's work in this area. The fact that we have late-term side effects, the fact that we as an organisation have a strong track record, but that we want to do more. And you see it on the bottom here are some nice bubbles, which explain the different ways we do that. And I'm just going to give you a very quick flavour of some of what I think are our proudest achievements at the moment in relation to building awareness of children's cancers and Cancer UK's work in this area. So we do a lot of press and PR around children's cancers. We work with national and regional press teams to share the stories of children who've been affected by cancer, the stories of their families, and also of our research and the work that we've done to improve treatments and increase survival. I'm not sure if any of you saw <coughs> yesterday on the BBC the new story that came out. Did anyone see it? Or, yeah. So it was a Cancer Research UK funded clinical trial that's run for 10 years. And what they found was that if they add a, another drug, to get technical, one called sodium thiosulfate to standard treatment for liver cancer in children, the survival didn't change. So everyone that was surviving was still surviving, but hearing loss was reduced by 50%. So this is a real life example of how Cancer Research UK are trying to find kinder treatments. So it's, it was on BBC yesterday, we were very excited about it. We have an incredible blog post from the researcher on our website, if anyone would like to read it. We also do a lot on social media, and we do this in different ways. We share again case study stories, but also work about the research. So squash in the middle here, you'll see some animations about some of the work we're doing so that people can really understand how we're spending the money 
and why we think it's important and what impact that would make to patients. And Shona will come on to that. We also just give information about what these types of cancer are. And we've recently updated our about cancer pages in relation to children's cancers. And we've done this with feedback and input from patients and from parents because they're the people that we know will find that information useful and they can give us the most informative feedback on whether it's good information, whether it's easy to understand. We also work with celebs. Does anyone know who those people in the corner are? Or can you know? They're the BAMFs. Apparently they're very famous with younger people. Does anyone's children like them or anything? No? no. I don't know. And favourite I think she's six feet under or four feet, is she? Four feet, I don't know. I don't. I'm kind of like in between the two. But what we do is we work with celebrities and we work with other organisations like our corporate partners to promote awareness for either. So a certain number of people know who Cancer Research UK are, but there are also people out there who don't know who we are. And the VAMPs have a far bigger following than Cancer Research UK, as does Niall Horan, as does Justin Rhodes. So by working with these celebs and working with these people, we're reaching new audiences and increasing awareness of children's cancers with people who don't know who CR UK are and who never <coughs> knew that children's cancers was a thing. We also write blog posts around children's cancers and not just about our research. I had the absolute privilege of speaking to a number of childhood cancer survivors, both younger and those who are a little bit older, about their experience. And they incredibly selflessly let me share their story, which was things from having to have discussions at 13 years of age with their dad about whether or not they stored sperm because they knew the infertile. And what we try to do with these blog posts is to really share people's stories, to again increase awareness of the issues that children and young people with cancer face, but equally what Cancer Research UK want to do to change this. And finally, we do work in our shops. During September, we sell gold ribbon pin badges, and we also do a lot of work throughout the year. We're running a campaign at the moment that's raising money for CRUK kids and teens, and last year, over its two campaigns in June and December, it raised over 300,000. I will say here, and I'll be open and honest, we can do more with our shops. And within my role, that is a huge thing that I'm looking at, I have massive plans in store for September that unfortunately I can't share with you now, but please do look out for it. And the other thing I want to say on that is that we are talking to some parent groups to say, this is what we're thinking of doing. Do you think this is better than this? Do you think this would work? What do you think about this being here? And getting patient and parent input into what we do in our shops. So yeah, there's areas, there's room for us to do more, and we're looking to do more. So now that my role is in place, I want to get that. I want us to say, what can we do? How can we generate more awareness? I'll be frank, we'll never paint the front of the shop gold, but there are other stuff that we can do. We can use gold in other ways. We can use the gold ribbon and we can talk about our research in other ways. So please, please, please do look out for that in September. There are plans to utilise our shops better because they're such a focal point of a lot of high streets and we really feel it's an area for us to generate awareness. The final thing that I really quickly wanted to talk about is the Cancer Research UK Kids and Teens Star Awards Party. If I say it too fast, it sounds like Star Wars and that's not quite as exciting. It's sponsored by TK Maxx and it's in its 15th year and the entire point of these awards is to recognise the strength and very bravery of children who have been affected by cancer. Everyone who was nominated receives a trophy, a certificate that's been signed by a lot of celebrities including Lewis Smith, the gymnast, and a £50 TK Maxx voucher. And there's around 500 children nominated every year. Nominations are open at CRUK.org Star Awards all year round. And the only criteria is that the child has to be under 18 years of age and has had or has been treated for cancer in the last five years. And every year we bring some of those families and some of those children, and importantly, their siblings, along to a party where we give them a day where they can forget about the fact that they had cancer. They can just enjoy it. They can be a family. They can have some fun. And what you'll see along the bottom here is some coverage from our Star Wars party last year where we decided to give some children who had missed cancer the year, or missed Christmas or the year before because of cancer treatment, Christmas in July. So they had Santa come, they got to visit Santa's grotto, they got some presents. This morning came down and Philip and Holly gave them some presents. And while this is ultimately, the children are at the heart of this party, it's another opportunity for us again to increase awareness about the fact that children's cancers are a thing and about the fact that we need to do more so that no child ever misses a Christmas again because of cancer treatment or that if they do, they still have a good quality of life after they survive. So I'm going to pass you over to my colleague Shona now, who's going to talk you through just some examples of the research that we're funding in this area. So as 
Anya said, I'm Shona, and I work in the um, other side of the charity where we fund the research that's going on now in, in, in cancer, in children's cancer research. And I should probably admit to Anya that when I first joined the organisation in September, I went to a meeting where somebody said Star Wars very fast, and I thought we were talking about Star Wars for most of the meeting. So um, I, I had a lot to learn about the, um, how we generate income around children's cancer research. And when we were putting together this presentation to come and talk to you about the kinds of research that Cancer Research UK funds, we thought a lot about, about what we do fund and what that actually means for you. So this is, um, this is, this, okay. so this is the treatment, um, the, the research sort of pathway that we fund. This, so Cancer Research UK, we talk a lot about how we fund all kinds of research. We talk about how we fund clinical trials, how we fund basic research. And for you, what's important is how we actually get to this side. And really, I should have drawn something here. That, that's where we're trying to get to. We're trying to find those new, better kinds of treatments that we all keep talking about. And yeah, we, we're trying to get there. But what we're realizing is, is once we fund all these different aspects, so we fund things down at this end, we start at this left-hand side. This is that funding, that basic research, understanding um, what is going wrong in cancer cells in order to cause cancer, and that underpins all cancer types. And we move through this into the more sort of drug discovery ends, looking at um, how, how we can find new novel agents or new targets of interest for specific cancer types. And we also fund things in the early phase clinical trial arena, which um, Guy's already spoken about today, those new phase one, phase two clinical trials where we're trying things for the first time in children. And then if these are successful, we move on into, into this phase where we start rolling it out on a larger scale and looking at it against that standard of treatment that's already here. And is that treatment better? Is it kinder? But one thing I'm terrible about is the statistics, but we all know how few the children's cancers have got through here in the last 20 years. And there is something in the pathway that isn't, isn't quite working, really. So what we know about at Cancer Research UK is that we need to do other things. We can't just fund this pathway. We actually have to fund things around it in order to provide the correct structure for this pathway to succeed. So we also fund infrastructure. And we've been really working hard on that recently to try and fund more infrastructure to, to provide the correct foundation for these clinical trials and scientific programs that occur. So a colleague of mine described funding infrastructure as a bit like um, buying a mug tree for your kitchen. So we all have mugs in our kitchen, we shove them in our cupboards and they, they stack, but the handles sit a bit wrong and you can't get that many in your cupboard really. But then you buy a mug tree and they all sit nicely on the mug tree and suddenly you can put more mugs on the mug tree and they fit together better. So, so whilst we can do all these clinical trials, it, it's whether they fit together well and whether actually does this this pathway is successful. It, we want to build the skeleton around making the most out of this and making this the most successful it can possibly be. This will happen, but if it's got that better structure and that better foundation for this to occur on, we're going to get more success to this end. Now this is a long-term pathway and it's a long-term goal, and by pushing those infrastructure in, we're not going to see results tomorrow and we're not going to see results next year, but the point is, is that we will see results by doing it. But we can't just do things from the bottom up. We also need to do it from the top down. We also need, we can't just um, respond to things that are coming and say, oh yeah, that's good and that's good and so we'll do this and again, that's disjointed. We need to have strategies around this. We need to understand the problems, what's going on. We need to understand how this pathway can be made better. So we need to bring together the best minds in the world together to start helping us to create strategies around this, to start going, these are some of the problems, these are the obstacles, this is what it is. And again, this is a long-term thing. It's not going to solve our problems tomorrow. But if we start understanding it, we can start driving strategies around improving this pathway to get to this end. So to go to what we're funding in infrastructure, guys already talked a lot about this this morning. So in terms of basic research, as you know, we fund a lot of cancer research, UK institutes and centres. We've just fund a brand new 
Crick, uh, Francis Crick Institute in central London, where that basic science occurs. But in terms of what we fund for, um, specifically for children's cancers, we fund the DCNC, a um, pediatric network, where we can drive those early phase clinical trials through them, where we can bring the best, we can bring those centres together to work on an international scale to make the UK more attractive for people to bring their um, clinical trials to the UK. We also fund the Pediatric Clinical Trials Unit in Birmingham that many of you might be familiar with. Most of the clinical, um, children's clinical trials in the country run through um, the Birmingham CTU. And this, this um, clinical trials unit hosts a specialised team who are specialised in the setup and the delivery of clinical trials in order to try and um, ensure their success. And we also fund the Biobank up in Newcastle, which I was very fortunate to visit on Tuesday, actually. And some of the uh, guys from the Biobank, I, I can see them up in the corner, the teacher in the corner, so please do speak to them about this, because this is a fantastic resource. And this is the only Biobank that we solely fund in this country. Um, and it's a pediatric one. And this is where um, we take, the, the team take tumor samples from children, and they bank them for the researchers to then use so that we can start understanding um, children's tumours and understanding the mechanisms of what can go wrong. We also fund some of the UK's leading scientists. So these are some of the top minds in this country that work very much at this end of the spectrum. These guys are the guys who are trying to understand why normal tumour cells, well, sorry, normal cells turn cancerous. What is it that goes wrong? Why do they start dividing? And these guys are trying to unpick these specifically in children's cancers, and they're trying to understand if there are any weaknesses that we can start to explore, exploit. How can this start feeding into new therapies? What are the mechanisms that are causing these specific cancers to occur? These guys are unpicking it in order to try and drive through this end of the spectrum towards new treatments so that we understand what we're targeting with those new treatments. We also fund a um, portfolio of clinical trials, as we've talked about today. Um, so we fund clinical trials that go run from the um, early phase, more experimental um, end of the spectrum, right through to, um, to late phase. We have about 14 clinical trials in our portfolio. I think it's six early phase and eight late phase clinical trials. And here I just put up a couple of them. This is just a snapshot of some of the ones, and some of them might be um, familiar to yourselves. And some of them are very highly experimental, and um, other ones are sort of further down in, as I say, the um, phase three end of the categories. What's the format? <laughs> are you as good at me? So, in, so, we know that there's been a huge shift in this country around brain tumors. Um, only a few years ago, there was way too little research occurring in brain tumors. Um, there was just not enough. And obviously we all know about Tessa Giles' campaign and her speech in the House of Lords and subsequent debates in the House of Commons around brain tumours. And this is something that we've really seized upon in the organisation for children. And how can we, what can we do around this field around for children's research? And at the beginning of the year, we announced the funding of the Children's Brain Tumor Centre of Excellence. And what this is designed to do is to bring together two of the best minds in this country from different institutes in order to start bringing all this pathway together and start <coughs> to try and accelerate it because we know that this pathway is, is slow. We all know that and I know it's a frustration for everybody. So how can we speed it up? So this brain, um, I always get the words wrong, brain tumor center of excellence, we want to try and speed, speed up this pathway by building capacity within children's um, brain tumour research. We want to develop the resources for children's brain tumour research, and we want to spark collaborations and bring together the best minds in the world to start looking and discussing children's brain tumour research. And so this is almost an expanded part of this um, early understanding the disease, and what they're trying to do within this um, brain tumour centre of excellence is they want to get the tools to study children's brain tumours. They want to start looking at targets that they can start looking at. They want to start doing drug discovery and getting preclinical testing and speeding up this pathway from 
one end to the other to try and get into that early phase clinical trials um, arena sooner. And this is my last slide, but this is where we're going to the future. We're still harnessing this. There's a brain tumor um, uh, strategize is around 25 million pounds that we've uh, committed to investing in brain tumor research in the next five years. And we announced in, at the beginning of May that we want people to um, start forming children's cancer dream team translational um, awards. We want people to put in the best minds from the US and the UK. We want those best minds to come together to put in applications for money to study the translational aspects of children's brain tumor research. And this is where it's going. Again, this is trying to drive more knowledge in this end to try and get into this um, clinical, um, clinical trials um, phase. So in summary, we are working hard to um, increase awareness, as, as Zonia has been talking about, of the cancers that affect children and young people in, in this area. And we are looking for new opportunities and new ways to increase awareness of the various aspects of children's cancers. And we, we, we're lucky as an organisation that we have generous funding towards our children's cancer research. And we are making progress, but we also have the understanding that we need to make progress in areas all around that, that, north, that pathway that we keep talking around. We need to put the infrastructure in and we need to get strategy in place to drive that pathway forward in a coordinated and accelerated fashion. And I'm going to leave it there. So if anybody's got any questions, please do ask both of us.